and gentlemen, boys and girls, things of all ages, how the devil are you? I'm Mr. Kraken, and today, yes, I am drawing a region map for my campaign. Um, previous stream I did was a dungeon map, which worked out pretty cool. That was rolling from uh, the DMG tables, but I'm now back to just freeballing it. Um, so today is going to be obviously putting in the, the bits on the map, but also sort of giving you little tips on the actual um, sort of methods that I use when I'm creating maps. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. I am watching the chat and D&D, um, &D, Photoshop, map making in general, uh, things like that. It's all good. Once again, we have the YouTube Creator Studio music in the background. Uh, let me know if it's too loud or whatever. And I shall adjust. Because it's quite loud for me, because I'm wearing the old headphones. But it should be of an acceptable volume, and you should still be able to hear me over the top. Uh, first question already in. Jimmy Boy asks, I've got a question. What fantasy map will you be making a known map style? Uh, as far as known map styles, more than likely... Um, I've said in previous streams that my uh, art style is quite heavily influenced by that of um, Mike Schley, who has been uh, a designer of D&D &D maps for many years. Uh, I think he started before even 4th edition. I'm not quite sure. Uh, the hardware I'm using is the trusty Wacom, Intuos Pro, uh, wireless kit included. Um, computer spec wise, I've 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 got an all rounder rig, uh, sixty four gigabytes of RAM, uh, an Nvidia GTX nine eighty, um, Intel i seven four something I don't know, uh, but it, it's it's quite high spec stuff. Uh, you can pull this off with low end stuff. I'd say for your scratch disk for Photoshop to keep the memory size when you're working with maps. Um, I always recommend using uh, a solid straight drive for your scratch disk because it really helps. It really helps. Uh, Prince of England has asked the climate of the region that you'll be making. Uh, at the moment, uh, if I just go to... Uh, this is the world. Um, obviously not filled in, just blocked in the main, uh, the continents and the, the, the land shape. And this is the region that we'll be doing. It's temperate. I, for this, um, this continent, the continent of Varash, uh, which is the main continent in the There's Always a Tavern podcast. It's kind of like England, uh, the United Kingdom, much larger um, so, this sort of area here is very English standard weather. Um, not too hot. Summer, it's kind of hot. I don't, fat boy, why, why am I not your friend? Um, but yeah, this is Englandish weather. Uh, there is actually a large crevasse from magical instant uh, in the law in this area and then we get as we get further north this is Scotlandy type so quite cold uh, lots of snow lots of mountains things like that um, but yes the region we're working on at the moment is that surrounding Raven's Landing which is the uh, the landing point of the campaign really uh, the group are currently on the tiny 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 little island of gold apple down here uh, at the moment, and they originated from the not so tiny tiny island down here. Uh, so, Chimmy Boy has asked, uh, This is my first time here. Do you have any tips or tricks for beginners with Photoshop? Uh, yes, a graphics tablet. Top tip. Um, in terms of map making, well, actually, this is kind of a general tip. In your preferences, under performance, 
always chuck this up quite high. You you want to give um, Photoshop as much RAM as possible. Although, considering that my, my setup is for video editing and stuff like that, I don't give it all of it. It, it, it doesn't even touch the surface. Um, history states and stuff like that. Do it as much as you can. Get as much in there as you can. Um, hard drive, again, the scratch disks, I was saying, use a uh, solid state drive uh, over a traditional hard drive, just to improve your, your speed. Uh, the bamboo is cheap. Uh, one of these bad boys, the bamboo, that'll work just as good. I always stress this, whenever someone asks about tablets and stuff like that, I always say, whack them. That's it. Just whack them. There is. I've tried uh, many, many moons ago. Uh, very cheap. You know, trust they make cheap uh, keyboards and stuff like that. Well, I, I really wanted just a cheap graphics tablet when I was um, not, not, not so financially sound, and I couldn't justify spending the cash on a on a bamboo or well, any sort of whack-on product at the time, because they were all still quite expensive. So I got a trust, and it was horrendous. Um, so, yeah, back to the map. As you can see here, I've deviated a little bit from my usual sort of stream, in that I've already filmed some in. Just to save time, I've blocked in the base um, and the actual key layout. And included some forestry, um, as yet to finish. But again, I'm using brushes that uh, I've created and I showed this one off last time. This is my go-to um, kind of like dry media uh, ink and wash brush. Um, the, it's, it's mainly, it gets its niceness um, from the dual brush part of it. And then you figure out all the scattering and stuff like that. We're not going to start with that. We're going to start with the hills. Now, this is a very common um, misconception about Photoshop that you can't get a brush to follow um, your path or what you're doing. And people say, use Illustrator instead. It's absolute bloody nonsense. So, um, ah, my brush seems to have vanished. Never mind. We shall make a new one. And in fact, I've got the untitled here. Right. Here's a little example right here. Now, people say you can't do this with Photoshop and that you should do it in Illustrator. Nonsense. So what I've got here is an ellipse um, made with the custom shape tool. Well, with the shape tool. Make an ellipse. And then point selection the direct selection tool there. Yes, convert it to a normal shape. And then just stretch out the top point. There we go. Now, if you hold control and then click over here, it will select the shape. And then edit, define brush preset. That's fine because this is going to get deleted after. Uh, Windows 8 touchscreen. Andrew, I wouldn't recommend it um, unless you mean by Windows 8 touchscreen you mean a Surface Pro 2, which is Wacom tech. Um, which, going from uh, a bamboo, uh, bamboo into a, anything like that to this took a bit of getting used to because there's, there's uh, it's not such high... Uh, resolution and it takes a little bit again used to it's kind of like going from drawing on pen and paper or pencil and paper to a tablet and then back to a different kind of tablet it's very confusing but as in the actual touchscreen um, you can try you can try unfortunately the surface Pro stuff doesn't work with actual Wacom pens. I really wanted to be able to use my Wacom pen um, for the Surface. Can't be done. 
So I draw with the uh, the bog standard chitty stylus. Meh. Um, yeah, where are we? Ah, yeah, so we've defined the brush preset just for the base shape, which is here. We're going to select that, hit F5, which brings up the um, the brush customization. Turn off smoothing. I'm just knocking that off now. So, brush tip shape, we want spacing because we don't want them all close together. We actually want it spaced out. So I'm going to space it by uh, 190. And shape dynamics, you want that ticked. And as you can see in the bottom there, um, just above my head, that it's all wiggly, 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 wiggly. Uh, we want to turn off pen pressure in the control. And we want to change control direction to... Oh no, that is right. Ha ha. Uh, we just want to turn the angle jitter down. That doesn't normally have that preset. Marvellous. Uh, so you want to turn the angle jitter to zero. Leave the control on direction, and then we shall see what happens here. That will, when I adjust the size, right down. Let's check it on 12. Whee! That now follows the direction of the, the curve that you're painting, really. Whee! There we go. So that's a great way to quickly do hills and stuff. Just going to put the spacing up a bit now that it's at the new size. Yep, that's fine. And leave it at 12. And as I must have inadvertently deleted my other one, fill brush. There we go. I've been wanting to tell people about that for ages. Hello, Alexander Ramos. How the devil are you? Right. So we got the hills and the brush technique for the hills there. All done nicely, nicely. So, I'm going to go back to my original brush when I can find it. Because I have got a lot of brushes. And I don't use these ones here that are that are uh, map icons. They're in there for a reason, just to show stuff. Um, so let's have a quick look. Jimmy Boy, feel free to have a look backwards at, uh, on my channel and have a look at other maps that I've made. Um, a lot of them I made from scratch. It doesn't really come down to knowledge of Photoshop per se. Uh, as long as you've got a good brush and you're patient, it's all good. And then the rest just sort of comes with time. I mean, I'm, I'm always wanting to improve and that's the main thing where the hell there we go there it is I should really categorize my brushes so we'll drop that down to two which is what i use um for putting in the detailing on the trees just the minor details you don't want it to stand out too much um the tree line yes that's a nice solid color but then inside lifting basically uh, as soon as we actually get a texture in there It'll all come together nicely. Uh, tree outline layer. And black. Yep. And I'm going to turn on uh, the pressure. Because it just drops things nicely. And doesn't give you the hard edges. Which isn't what I want. Uh, the hard edges are not what I want for. Just filling in little bits inside the trees. So, uh, in terms of this area, a, d a DM of four campaigns? Dear God, man! I wish I had the time, really. That'd be nice. Professional DM. The job that was posted on Roll20 the other week, uh, the other week, the other month, and has been filled. I've yet to actually watch any of the streams, though. I don't have the time. This is a luxury, doing just chilling out, doing a stream. The other half's in work. The daughter's not here. Gives me a chance to think of what I can do, what I can stream. Stuff like that. I don't know. I'm just gibbering. I do that. 
So I could just select and then expand, like I did in the previous video, but I'm just painting underneath the outline layer uh, on the fill layer, just to get the edges. Normally what I do is draw the outline, select inside it with the magic wand, expands, so there's no nath to edges. And then fill it. But because I drew the, the inner detail uh, black work on the inside, I kind of shot myself in the foot. Hey! Oh, never mind. Fat boy, if you think that I could get a Twitch partnership, you are wrong, sir. Because this isn't game content. Uh, as far as getting a job in uh, in map making, I, I I'm fully open to commissions. I've I've done um, I've, I've I've branding and stuff, the general design I've done before. Paid work-wise, freelance. Map making, I, there are people who are better and faster than me because I have a full-time job, uh, run my own business, and then I have, and a, you know, a life. Gone are the days of being young and working and then staying up all night and doing loads of other shit and video editing and all that. I wish I could do that. It would have been nice. Split... Someone, you know, nail down the uh, the cloning process, and I'll happily split myself. Although, whether anyone would actually want two of me running around is a completely different story. <laughs> I hope you can hear the music, because uh, it fills in the gaps when I stop waffling. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I could just sing along. Is there a creative tag on Twitch now? I thought they they totally nixed um, anything non-game. I kind of like streaming straight to YouTube, if I'm honest. It saves editing time, and I find that there's more from from the little experiments that I've done. I found that when streaming, I get more nice natural hits on YouTube when I'm streaming on YouTube than if I stream to Twitch and then upload. Which is kind of disappointing. Because Twitch is kind of a discovery watch now. Which is great. And YouTube is an on-demand sort of thing. I mean, YouTube is still relatively infant when it comes to live streaming stuff. They're adding new things constantly. Uh, I noticed today when I uh, came to set up the the stream panel that they've now uh, put in the functionality for enabling 60 FPS streams. However, when I tried to use it, it didn't work. So, here we go. <clears throat> Andrew Coldham, I feel like you need the monotony of regular work to come up with the ideas anyway. I don't do regular work. I... <laughs> I have ideas for D&D &D stuff everywhere. Um, and Not all of it gets written down. Some of it I, I write down in Google Drive. There's, there's a DM top tip. Google Drive or OneNote, whatever. You're syncing documents and stuff. I like Drive because I can just create uh, documents and in the browser and all that. Uh, fanboy, yeah, I know I can stream to both, but that means watching two chats. I'm, I'm, I'm an interactive kind of guy, as you know. But yeah, I've, I've thought about it. I have. I might do one day. If enough people, you know, say, "I want more streams," I'll do more streams and all that. <clears throat> So 
So yeah, uh, Google Drive, DM top tip. Google Drive, great. Because you can share stuff with your players and all that. And um, like here, showing on um, Drive itself, I can link to, like this, so as not to spoil it for my players who are watching right now. So we have here, Hanschenhof, which is a settlement, population of about 50, and its, its purpose is uh, a chicken farm. The interest is, as in the interest for quest progression, storyline, stuff like that. And that is the order. That links to uh, another sheet that I've got called the Quest Grid. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go to the Quest Grid because then my players will see a lot of stuff that I don't want them to see. Spoil the magic. Um, looking at chat. What are your thoughts on pen and paper? Because I don't have an A3 scanner or tablet, so I do my entire maps on paper. Do it. I, I'm just a digital person. Um, don't get me wrong. I, I like pencil and paper. I really do. For like drawing characters and stuff. I really do like pencil and paper. Um, in fact, bear with me a second. Haha! I return! Um, so, yeah, pencil and paper wise, uh, I haven't got any maps to hand. However, for, I, I mainly use. Um, <laughs> Fat boy, Gobbles is long dead. Or is he? But I mainly use um, digital stuff, just because it's there and done, and I mean, uh, my games are played on virtual tabletop. So it's. It, it's, I wouldn't say it's nicer or quicker or anything like that because I could just scan in um, pencil and paper stuff. If uh, all of my players live near me, then I'd probably do more traditional stuff, get a nice big sheet of graph paper and draw on it. That'd be fine because I could draw on it as they're doing it then. It just seems a bit too eh when you're doing it digital. So I'm just going to quickly add another camera shot because I forgot about that one. Ah. Here we go, and da -da -da. There we go. Ah. There we go. That's better. Right. So the actual the actual purpose of doing this um, was just to show you the the pencil and paper side of it. I mean, there's there's a little goblin duty who uh, my characters might be meeting at some point. We shall see. But yeah, I like pencil and paper as well. And there we go. So yeah, tangent. Opened up with. Yeah, so it, it auto switched when it shouldn't have done. Um, I was editing the shot. Apologies. <laughs> so, yes, uh, the map. What I'm going to do uh, on this side is have a little play around with the texturing of the forest. So, I'm going to chuck in a new layer, give it a mask. Uh, which is control click on uh, the tree layer and then start a new layer and hit the uh, the layer mask icon and it'll make the mask around uh, that selection and I need a new brush <coughs> Now comes the, the tricky bit. We're, when I'm making maps like this, um, I play around with the brushes a lot. And I use the, um, the pressure opacity to build up uh, dark spots and stuff like that. I'm going to set the layer style to multiply. Yeah, that's good. I like that. It's fine. 
So just randomly dotting it around. Just to make it stand up a little bit more. Yes, players do always want to do what you haven't planned for. It's what they're there for. That's why I stopped planning for things. That's why I've got the quest grid. So when they do things I haven't planned for, in the quest grid, I, I enter in what they have done so I can possibly refer back to it at another time for another plot hook or something along those lines. Your actions are never forgotten, my players. Your actions are never, ever forgotten. Even tiny little innocuous things you might never have thought of come back to surprise you. Not in a good way, not in a bad way. They just surprise. So another sort of, not a tip, just a personal preference. When I'm making maps, normally... I'd be listening to the likes of Two Steps From Hell. Um, I really enjoy listening to classical music, um, or cinematic music, rather, when I'm designing maps. Like what's playing now, but obviously what I'm playing now is suitable for playing uh, on YouTube without incurring any nasty uh, account action. I'd love it if... Um, Two Steps From Hell went royalty free. <laughs> but it sort of helps with the creative ideas and the setting. I'm a, I'm a very... One of those people that daydreams and has, you know, a, a film scene. Totally fictitious um, in the mind's eye. And I hate it when I've got something in my mind's eye and I go to draw it and it just doesn't look the same. <sighs> I'm sure there are lots of people exactly the same. So this is not actually looking too bad on the, the shadow front. I will go around again with highlight. Um, make things stand out nicely. Don't screw the cat, fat boy. There's not enough time for that. I want to watch Black Sheep now. Um, so instead of watching, or another thing, instead of watching, um, listening rather, to epic music or cinematic music, anything like that, is to watch fantasy films like, you know, Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it can give you inspiration not only for... Uh, mapping out areas like a great rolling tundra or something like that but also quest ideas at the same time and again we go back to the, the handiness of having google drive or something like that open because you can just go oh there's an idea i can work on that later scribble it down in the digital dm notebook i'd love to have the good old-fashioned um ring binder of dm ideas but it's just doesn't make doesn't make for good searching. <laughs> I prefer digital. Control F. Oh, yep, there we go. And dynamic links and stuff like that. So yeah, as before, this region is very Englandy. United Kingdomy. So there's plenty of woodlands. Um, Ample farming opportunities. And some nice mountainous regions. Hills and things like that. Now this is very time consuming, I know. And doesn't make for interesting viewing. But you, you get the general um, picture of what I'm doing. Uh, as far as the brush goes, like I said, it's just one of my... Uh, hundreds of possibly thousands of brushes um, and I was just lucky that I picked it out off the bat and was comfortable with it but that's the thing you've got to pick the brush that you think looks best of, for what you're doing and it could be something totally totally unimaginable 
for the task at hand and yet it works really well when you use opacity settings and stuff like that or you play with the spacing and it's like ooh bingo go around the outside yeah don't forget obviously I'm zoomed in at the moment at 300% uh, so when you're designing and you're zoomed in don't get too bogged down with detailing. Mainly, I mean, if it's for commercial properties uh, purposes, then full detail because the people who pay for it would appreciate it. But if you're just designing a map for your players, they probably won't appreciate it so much. I mean, they'll appreciate it, but it won't be on the same level as someone who's paid for your map and they just go, oh, wow, that's nice. And they look at every nook and cranny to see if they can find a, a surreptitiously added penis. You're going to be looking at all of my maps now. I know you two. And when I say that, I'm referring to the two players who are in chat right now. <clears throat> From the Oxymoron Gaming Channel. Go and look them up. See, I'm nice to my players. The school rule book that they give out is my scribble space. I think I'm the only one who still has one. Nice. I remember the days of school. Wish it didn't. There's much more useful information that could be stored in the memory. Um, but yeah, my workbooks and stuff like that were just full of, full of doodles and all the rest of it. So yeah, that's actually looking quite nice there. Mm, look better with the highlighting in, I'm sure. But have no fear, I can still adjust the layer opacity if I think that it's too dark. You want the nice dark spots when you're doing thick woodland. Yes, that's the channel, Oxymoron Gaming. I'll allow that to spam. go so now it's time for doing exactly the same again but with the highlights so I'm going to select the layer control click on the the image of the layer and then we got the mask change the layer style to screen and then start all over again doing the pop 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 Although I might change that to overlay. No. Um, see if we can find a nice not a dodge. Linear dodge maybe. That might look a little nicer in the screen. Deep fried spare. Bush. So again, there's probably a lot nicer ways that you can, um... Why is Steam open? Go away, Steam. You shouldn't be open. Sorry. Uh, yeah, there's probably not a lot uh, quicker ways. I mean, you can make yourself a pattern brush and just chuck down a load of trees, but I prefer to draw without patterning because the eye is drawn to patterning as strange as it may sound I mean patterns do sort of disappear into the background but if someone can spot a pattern that's it then they've, they've spotted the pattern and it stands out like a sore thumb and it bugs a lot of people I'm like that uh, that river's looking a bit straight yeah It is a bit straight. It does bend further up. Um, does get a bit windy. At the moment, um, it's just the basic layout. I mean, anything is subject to change. 
if you look at the uh, town map creation video, uh, that started very differently to how it looks now. Talk and fat boy, close your eyes now. That's what it looks like now. Talk and fat boy, you can open your eyes again. So, yeah, I think I might drop the opacity a little bit on the shadow layer. That's looking better. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. I prefer that. Happy with that. Boosh. <laughs> so now add the highlights in for this side as well. So yeah, when it comes to rivers and stuff like that, I mean, nothing is set in stone until I start doing the detailing, really. Uh, like with the woods and the forest, adding in the, the highlights and the shadows now, um, I'm, I'm happy with how they look. Uh, now it's just down to the little niggly bits. Um, but yeah, the, like the coastline um, is just that that's very, very straight. But considering these hex uh, are one mile, it, it's yeah, it needs to be redone. It's just the basic sort of layout. And this is the other Photoshop top tip layers, lots and lots and lots of layers. And yes, you will forget to do a new layer sometimes, but. That's all right, Tog. Whatever you missed is fine. You, you missed nothing. I was merely referencing what Raven's Landing started out as and what it looks like now. And as you haven't seen it since... the uh, second stream? I don't know. But yeah, there is, there, there is a shot of Raven's Landing. As it is now, if you, if you want to go back later. You'll see it on Monday. So, yeah, I'm happy with the way that the woods have come out. It's nice. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Might add a little bit more of the black work detailing. I don't know yet. But that's, again, when you're making maps, you can come back to it later. With fresh ideas. Like the hills at the moment. They need uh, highlighting and what have you, to really bring them up. I've got a transparent neck? Have I? Yeah. Why is, why is my neck green? <laughs> that should help some. I say should. No! Horrendous. Oh, I knew I should have had the full lighting set up. It was looking fine, really. I'm going to go all ethereal on you now. Ah! Ah! La 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 la. Well, that's kind of got a bit weird. I don't know why. Never mind. I knew I should have done the lighting earlier. It was looking fine. Now it's all gone to pot again. Never mind. There we go. <laughs> That's all good. Bit of a pain in the bum to grow green screen stuff, but not essential. Oh, don't even go there with the camera settings. Because I, I don't use a camera, camera, per se. I don't use this. I use 
an actual camcorder into um, a capture card. So, yes, uh, although the green screen's not necessary, that's just me being on screen and saying hello. Hello. Uh, the actual, the meat and two veg is obviously the, the map itself. I'm superfluous to requirements other than actually drawing and talking and all that jazz. But normally I do uh, the full setup and backlight and all that and it works fine. But kind of called it in today. I'm sorry. Right. What was I going to do? Ah, yes. Mountains. Um, as you can see here on this map, actually we'll add in... Uh, another two towns, settlements, cities. Hmm, where are we? What's the what's the mileage? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, ten miles from Raven's Landing. We can chuck in another town, I imagine. Uh, that'll do nicely. So, what are the suggestions coming up under this video? What? What? What suggestions? Oh, on YouTube. I have no idea. What are they? Let's have a look. Stress management. They know me so well. The art of positive thinking. Postman Pat and the runaway, runaway train. What? <laughs> I have no idea. I really don't. But that's, that's quite interesting. Why? Okay, there's some Photoshop speed painting, some adventure mapping, but there's loads of, like, Indian faith ceremony stuff. Interesting. I don't know. I have no, I have no affiliation with, with any such sort of philosophies on life. Ah! No. Right, so overlay places folder. Uh... That's a town. I want to put a town in rather than a settlement. Not always. Suggestions aren't always what you uh, what you view. Sometimes it says recommended for you. Other times it's meant to be somewhat related to the video. I have no idea how Indian life philosophies are related to. Maybe it's because I included the keyword fantasy. Sorry, sorry. <clears throat> so yes, I think it's down. Now, uh, aside from a certain few places uh, in this area, like Raven's Landing, there that has a specific name because of a, a certain event. Uh, all the rest, of this I I kind of like the Germanic names and old. Oldy wildy medieval uh, architecture for this world. So I'm I'm going with Germanic names, um, and to that effect, we've got Hanschenhof, uh, which is a settlement. Keilerhof, settlement. Unterhaven, settlement. Punthaven, which is now a town, was formerly a city, uh, was a harbour. Uh, Unterhaven was um, uh, a logging camp to m strip down the wood and provide timber for the uh, the dockyards of Punthaven. So this is a crossroads and German toponymy. We this. Uh, this, this is a map making or you know fantasy setting um, tip is Wikipedia and getting the the sort of is it etymology etymology of place names uh, or town names things like that uh, with common suffixes prefixes attachments and others it's great um, and then obviously using English to German translation on Google happy days obviously they're not going to be perfect German or whatever language. Yes! Hanshan is chicken! That is chicken farm. In, in straight, straight up how I've read it on there, not necessarily as it actually is in German. But yes, Hanshenhof. Chicken farm. And uh, 
Kailahof is a boar farm. Or pig farm. Something like that. Obviously, it's quite loose. It's just to give places names. And the, the one thing that I always find uh, with making a continent or a region, whatever, is actually giving places names. And if you think of the setting and the, the time scale that we're in, they would be named for a reason. They would have a reason to where, A, be where they are on the map, um, tactical sheep purposes and stuff like that. But the name would normally have a name for a reason. Uh, so, let's have a look. See if there's any, any sort of thing for crossroads or joinings. Hmm. Well, we could just give it the Stetton. Well, Stet for a settlement. Eh. Inside step, no, no. Hedged field or wood? No, it's not hedged. Or a wood. Don't want keep. Hmm. So let's have a look at the placement of it. Uh, Fat Boy's asked if he can steal more bacon from Kielhoff. Uh, possibly. You're welcome to try. That one's having me vex them. There may be mountainous regions there, so we'll 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 go to the settlement. Um, oops. Which is on this crossroads next to the river. That makes things a lot easier for the naming. And for the purposes of the stream. Um, so yeah, we'll go with the Ford for that one. And you'd think I'd remember the fruit. And let's uh, Woods Edge. Um, let's have a look at the prefixes just momentarily. Yeah, little, little. I like little Luton Ford. Luton Ford. Luton Ford to crossing the river. Maybe, maybe. Now, normally, you know, the fastidious DM would probably have all of these ideas and quests and stuff uh, with town names written in, nice, orderly fashion. But I don't do that. I, I just, I'm, I've got key points for campaign stuff. And then I expand from there. Like, doing this map. I know what I've got quest ideas and stuff like that where I can put into certain places and if I had the idea then I could name a town specifically for uh, that that part of the arc um, but not necessarily I've lost my train of thought uh, not necessarily um, having reams and reams and reams of information. Uh, that's when it comes in. If you're designing a map for someone else and they've got all that information, great. If you're doing it yourself spontaneously, then yeah. Now, I'm looking for a spot on the map where I can put a nice uh, follow the path for the road. Because uh, this is the great road leading out of Raven's Landing, which is the main port. Uh, of the southern coast with Rashcon. There we are. So, as you can see, it serves as the main port for all these islands um, around here. As it is the southernmost tip. Um, there's, there's obviously ports all the way along 
for serving other places and stuff like that. But it's quite uh, the trade hub is Raven's Landing. Uh, there's a large market held in the square quite regularly, uh, at least once a month, and various other events happening in the square. But um, yes, the Great Road literally spans uh, the entire journey up to the capital, Valtenberg. goes all the way up, and this river here, which is yet to be named, starts uh, a good few miles away, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 miles away from Raven's Landing. So in reality, it should be quite large when it gets there, but um, I'm not a cartographer, really. I'm, I, as in, you know, making sure everything looks exactly how it should and all of that. I'm more about the story and the adventure and the fun. If I had a brief, I'm not going to write a brief up for myself. That's far too messy. Uh, well, I say messy. <laughs> far too anal for just doing it myself. If I had a brief to work to, then it would be done. But this is just an on-the-fly creative splooge as we're going along. That is not Punterhaven. <laughs> Punterhaven. Um, Punterhaven copy. Bye-bye. There we go. So we got Kleinfurt. And now that I've named something, it needs to go in the uh, list. Easily searchable, so when again, when I'm in the campaign, I can just control F, find, job done. Settlement. Um, we'll make that 100, actually. Population of 100, quite a large settlement. A uh, small trading post. Uh, farms. Yep, that'll do. On there. And again, it gives ideas on building the campaign itself. Because this is not necessarily a sandbox, but close enough. I mean, it's, as you can see, it's huge. Ah! Stop going to Raven's Landing! Close. It's huge. Zoom out, yeah. There we go. Um, and as I said, there is a split in the centre of the continent, which hasn't been drawn in yet. And I'll be actually playing as a player in the north. So I'm running the south part of the game. Uh, and the continent, and who knows, there may be crossover effects from what happens in my campaign um, and Tox's campaign where I'm playing. They may link together in certain ways. They may be in different times, who knows. Uh, but yes, there we go. Back to the, I haven't actually drawn anything, I've just put it in the name. So I want mountains. Now, here's a big thing. Mountains, if you're drawing isometric, style then mountains look really really sexy I like to stay with the top down I I, I don't know for certain things I might draw isometric like landmarks say if there was an absolutely huge mountain then I might squiggle it in isometrically but um, on the whole for this is going to be top down as it has been already for the trees and stuff. So, start with the black work and start with the folder. So we've got the tree outline, tree fill, the main overline. Let's chuck it there. Mountain. Oops. Mountain OL. And that was a folder. Actually, no, that's fine. Mountain. Well, I have no idea if you stopped chatting or my chat box is frozen again like it did last time. More comments below, yes. Nope. YouTube has some problems. I wish they used the Irk style. Um, 
like Twitch does, so that I can just join IRC. Makes it much easier. So, I need my solid brush. Ah, ah. Six, there we go. How do I feel about a warband of gnomes riding on the back of direwolves trolling the north? Gnomes rule! I like gnomes. Cool. Get my brush size to four for the thickest. Yep, it's fine. Go to black. Now. Well, the mountain ridge line. So again, once this is um, coloured and shaded and all that jazz, it will look, hopefully look, a lot better. Because I I really do like drawing mountains isometric rather than top down, so I'd hate to the, to then decide after the fact that I'm going to mix it, mix up the styles to that degree. Um, I don't know. We'll see how it looks. Ah, stop going up! Oh, screw it. I'll leave it as that is for now. So I'm quite a large-ish mountain range. Uh, at the moment, it's only covered a mile, so... Uh, a mile there. Two, three, three and a bit miles. And this is quite a mountainous region. I want to form a valley um, where the river is, ideally. So we'll actually carry that all the way up there, that ridge line. Sounds good to me. This is not actually looking as bad as I thought it would. Uh, that I thought it was, actually, as I was going. Might end up putting a high point there, just from the way it's shaped. So as I'm, whenever I do mountains or, you know, sides of stuff, I'm always playing with the detailing as I go along, once I've got a bit fleshed in, just to see if I'm on the right track. Glacial? Nah, not necessarily glacial. Mm. Possibly. Really regretting not going isometric. Yeah, the mountains may very well be changed. We'll get to that though. may use a different brush that might help might not might make it look even more horrendous this is what I mean whenever I'm doing stuff I'm always wondering can it look better and when I can when I've got it in my eye that it's it definitely can look better 
then it does bum me out slightly. If I was any kind of thinking man, um, Andrew, Andrew Calden was just pointed out uh, about the floodplain, I would look at um, mountainous regions on Google Maps. I have done that for town layouts before, looking at old English towns and stuff like that just to see the old road and see where quarries were in relation to the centre of the town at the time. Things like that, I find quite useful. But um, yeah, this is going to be quite the range. I mean, this road travels up the mountains, um, and I suspect that the mountain range will sort of follow this pattern uh, along there, along there, and this road's heading up, and then over and down. Uh, if we look on, yeah, it goes up and over and down, yeah. Uh, I suspect we will valley it there, quite possibly chuck a huge forest in there. Over here some more mountains I imagine, yeah, kind of happy with that. Needless to say, with the position of Raven's Landing to the river, if there ever was floods coming down from the mountains, uh, Raven's Landing would disappear into the sea, I imagine. Wow, time's gone really slowly. I've just seen that it's three o'clock. Guess what? It was more, more four o'clock. So, uh, yeah, let's include some mountainous region over here. Uh, Nonny General, Mr. Kraken, could you mention which brush sets you are using? Mine own. Uh, that's, the, that's the thing. Um, I have showed off uh, my main brush, which I'm currently using right now to do the, the black work. As far as other stuff, I have got brush sets from all over the place. Um, I make uh, brushes from photographs and stuff like that when it comes to grunge stuff. And oops. So yeah, it's it's experimenting with brushes basically to get where you want to be and what you want your style to sort of look like. I'm quite happy with the way I've got my brushes. Uh, in terms, I only really use. Um, for the main, a couple of brushes, and that's normally this one for main lines, and then this one for doing shadows uh, around walls, just to give it that little pocky texture. If I actually open recent. Da -da -da. Open, let's go with this one a second. So as you can see there, uh, I've used the main brush and then shrunk this chappy down oops, to add little pops of pop marks on stone and things like that. And yeah, those are actually the two main brushes that I use. On top of that, then it's textures and um, eek. textures and throwing other little bits in, like actually thinking about it, the textured one might help with the way the mountains look in my mind's eye. Uh, 
Yeah, that, that might help out with the, the mountainous regions. I don't know, again, it's one of those things. I'm going to play with it. I'm happy with the forest straight off the bat, and then the mountains go to pot. Sounds about right, really. Forward in the thickest line. I'll probably add some hills in uh, at the base of the mountains just to graduate the terrain. No problem with knowledge, aren't Good thing about mountains is they can always be um, a hidden society of Durgar or Dark Elves or something like that. Or the classic Mage's Tower. Sure, what, of all the ideas I've had, it's never been a Mage's Tower. Other cliches everywhere, but Mage's Tower not so much. Maybe a labyrinth. That's about as close as I come to a, a mage's tower idea. So, this is looking like random lines, and that's because they are. The problem when I get, when I know that something's not right, to continue, I tend to just sort of squiggle. And I really shouldn't, but it, it irks me, it really does. Hmm, yeah, not happy with the mountains. They may very well go isometric, but then it would spoil the entire composition. Hmm, I don't know, let's have a little play. Like I was saying about landmarking stuff, this is generally what I do for a, an evil volcano or something like that. Is have it surrounded, do it isometric, and then surrounded by the flat stuff. But I don't know right now. I'm at a, having a, a crisis of confidence, I suppose. Nah, as, uh, as far as the colours go, I don't think that would save that. I'd still not be happy with the black work. Yeah, that spoils it. I'm gonna have to rethink the mountains. I don't I don't know. I just don't know, damn it. Oh and I I was I thought it was gonna be onto a good thing when I had when I had the, the woodlands done. Hmm. Definitely gonna be a play about with one. I might do. I might. I might colour it and just see what it looks like from there. But
I'm glad that song's over there. Um, oh, might look alright. Might look alright. Hmm. I don't know. Right. Anyway, screw it. Move on to something else. Uh, I'll come back to that fresh another time, I suppose. Now, roads. Another top tip coming at you right now. Freeform pen tool. Make sure it's set to path. Top left there. And then draw your road in. Not your road dial. Your road in. There we go. Make sure there's some curviness. Now you can change that. I think it's called edge fidelity or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. But at the moment, just persevering. And we want the red. I also haven't got my palette set up today. Stroke, right click uh, when, with the path selected and hit stroke path. Ta-da! Instant roadage. And you can delete that. Job done. And I've just noticed that I used the different brush for the roads. It'll be three pixel size though, because that's generally how I roll. Um, here, we, whoop, that'll be the one I used. Stroke. Nicely done, that'll do. Have I got anywhere else I need to link up? Nope, just the <coughs> Hutchen, Hunchenhof. Which is up on the hill. Chickens on the hill. It's like babes in the wood. Not quite. Are there going to be a lot of woodland? Hmm. So again, thinking of the... The layoutishness and the roads most travelled. Just have a quick look over on this. So that go over that way. To a road there. Would we have a mountainous region so close to the sea? I don't know. Possibly. What makes more sense? Mountains or woods? Mountains. Hmm. Uh, Andrew, I am I am a member of Cartographers Guild. Um, if you're on, a, if you're referring to the mountains, then there, there there are loads of tutorials and stuff. It's just I'm just the way that it looks. I'm not happy with. I go I I go through things, uh, like with the woods. That was just potluck. That I was happy with the way it looked straight out. Um, the mountains, top down, need some work. In my mind's eye, they just don't look right to me. I shall, I shall overcome it, but it's one of those things where I won't overcome it in this session. It's just not going to happen. Because I'll get bogged down with that and I won't be able to think about anything else. So I move on. Persevere with other things. And that other thing, that town, that town's bugging me. But just for campaign wise, there needs to be a town there at that crossroads. There would be no need for an intersection that large uh, on the Great Road and the East West Road without a town. Overlay places. Uh, although I could put a ruin there. Hmm. Ruin town. That opens up some interesting ideas. No, a ruin. Ruin's far too old. We'll put a ruin over there somewhere. In there. Yes, that'll do. This is basically what I do on my own, listening to stuff or watching, uh, you know, fancy films. <laughs> I just think aloud. You're, you're currently in my head. And this song, Chopin, 
I love you, but no thank you. That's better. Bit of epic music. Now, I have got to decide a name, a Germanic sounding name for this place. Let's see what Crossroads is in Germany. Oh, Cruzan. Crossing intersection junction. Hmm. That'll do. Cruise on. <laughs> Should we add a, a something to it? sense. New crossing. That would be the old crossing. New crossing. Ah. That's going to be a town. Uh, 500 people, as we say. Trading post local, more local than Raven's Landing. Because people trade at Raven's Landing for sending to the Southern Islands. And... It's a very, it is a very popular place. Mainly for historical purposes. Sightseeing and stuff like that. The two flowers of Varash like to visit it. I keep on looking at the mountains. See, they don't look that... <laughs> I think it's the lower one that's bugging me more than the top one, because I've put it in the top bits. Screw it! I'm going over there. I'm going over. It's now got to that point. I knew it would. But it's bugging me so damn much that I just want to see what I can do with it. Especially as it is. This music isn't helping. Nope. Kazba. That's actually the title of the track. That wasn't being racist. Kazba Towers. Rip, 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 blah, blah, blah. There we go. So I'm going to continue. I'm actually going to continue with how I've been dotting these bits. So yeah, this this stream <laughs> isn't really akin to uh, the previous one, the DMG tables. I was in two minds whether to continue the uh, the manor house that I've been working on, or to the region map. And I, I kind of figured that I need the region map more for my campaign uh, to give my players a sense of belonging. So they know where they are and where they're going, what they're heading for.
kind of expecting The Apprentice. And at this rate, I would be fired. <laughs> I'm probably going to keep repeating myself. I'm, I don't know whether I'm trying to convince myself or whether it's actually the truth. I really don't know. Let's continue the peaks actually along here. point in there it splits off that can be like the Snowden I like Snowden I'm just thinking of the, the the campaign way I mean with all these mountains along here you'd imagine there to be quite a few sort of quarries um, A bit of gold, I imagine. Hidden in the hills. Yeah, it's not too bad. Kind of getting the love back for that style now. Always try something new. Might help with other things. What the hell layer did I draw that on then? Oh, that'll be why. Silly bastard. Back we go. Stick to that. Whoop. Ah. Oh dear, it's not going well today. There we go. That's better. Right, get rid of that. And that. Go away. Go away! I was with the bloody depressing stuff. Really distracting. Hmm. Have a look. Start running in the dotty bits. Whoop. There we go. New layer. See, rather than actually drawn, I just sort of pepper these around, just to give some blemishes on the on the map itself. I find that's the best use for a really broken brush like this.
And I think, given that I'm in a bit of a, a rut with these mountains, I may, I was originally planning on killing the stream at four, but I may kill it now at half past. Because it's not very entertaining for you good folks sat there watching and watching me ponder. on the lines. Hmm. Well, what do you know? I think I may have it, you know. Don't quote me on that. Next time you see this map, it might be completely different on the mountain range. But yes, thank you for watching. I'm I am going to kill it there because I've got to think about this, and I'll probably stick to doing um, battle maps and stuff like that for live streaming and then split up things like this for uh, tips and tutorial videos rather than live streams just for these very instances where it all goes crazy in the head um, but yeah again thank you for watching if you stuck with this far god bless you um, I hope you've learned something I know I have Because the original plan was to have a few things done just to get the style. And I did that with the forest and the hills and the roads and all of that. And I didn't do it with the mountains. But yes, I have been Mr. Kraken. You have been watching a live campaign map creation for the region. Don't forget to watch There's Always a Tavern on Mondays at 8pm British Summer Time with me, the humble Mr. Kraken, as the DM. Uh, talk. And the Oxymoron guys. Well, it's Talking Fat Boy as the Oxymoron guys, and then all the others uh, as they quite possibly venture this way and land Timora's Kiss, the boat, at Raven's Landing. This coming Bank Holiday Monday. But until then, have fun. Thank you again for watching. Please do check out my other videos uh, in terms of mapping and stuff like that. I shall see you again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.